Section 11 of the Rural Magazine and Literary Evening Fireside, Volume 1, Number 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Rural Magazine and Literary Evening Fireside, Volume 1, Number 1, by Various. Vine Dressing Near Vivi. Vivi, Indiana, October 28th the season for making wine is just over and notwithstanding the uncommon dry season the vine dressers near vive have made four thousand eight hundred and ninety two gallons political economics we copy the following from niles weekly register with an intention as his proposed essays appear of giving them a place in the rural magazine having no doubt from our knowledge of the editor but they will be instructive as well as interesting to our readers from the editor political economics introductory though so much has been said on political economy as applicable to the national prosperity by profits derived from national industry that we despair of offering anything new on the subject we have so far yielded to the wishes of many friends as to resolve upon the publication of a new series of essays to elucidate some of the facts that belong to this deeply interesting concern a concern that presses itself into every man's business which invades our firesides and accompanies us to our bedchambers yet so beset with it and feeling it in all that we have to sell or want to buy and whatsoever business we do that requires the aid of money or use of credit still we shrink from the trouble of ascertaining its operation and extent the mind by repeated mortifications and disappointments loses its tone and we seem rather disposed to trust to the chapter of accidents for redress that rouse ourselves to an exertion to put an end to our wrongs through the means afforded forgetting that effects flow from causes it has pleased providence to bless us with a goodly land and we are favored with the best system of government ever devised but the seat of ancient paradise is a howling waste in greece and rome are tended it by slaves a nation's prosperity is the happiness of the individuals composing it the freeman cannot be a happy man unless private industry secures private independence and freedom itself must pass into despotism the power of government rests in the moral and physical force of the governed and its wealth is constituted by personal acquisitions of property governments were made for the good of the people not the people for governments and their objects fail when private happiness ceases to be respected emancipation from political tyranny without the means of preserving personal liberty is a nullity the gift of life without the means of living is a destitute value production is the only source of national wealth that can be depended upon the home market even to the most commercial nations is of many times the amount of the foreign one the former is not easily affected except by a self-mistaken policy but the latter is as capricious as the winds and beyond our control speculation does not create value the purchase and sale of a million's worth of goods does not improve their quality or add to their quantity to the amount of a cent a change of commodities between different countries may increase their value to the extent of the labor expended in transporting them and it is generally convenient if not advantageous when exchanges are made on equal terms but poverty must be the lot of every society which barters the labor of two or more of its members for that of one person in another society employment is the best preservative of health and morals things should be so that every person willing to labor for his living should find labor to do and live plentifully if it is otherwise an error has been committed that ought to be corrected immediately for it is pregnant with the greatest evils it is the chief check to population and more powerful than the sword to destroy the liberties of nations nations and individuals are spendthrifts of the worst description when they purchase that which they can make from the spare labor at home who will give away a hundred dollars and their interest forever for the sake of receiving twenty dollars of his own money as a premium yet thus a nation acts when for the sake of the duties on imports it accepts of another nation any commodity which it might supply itself with without detriment to its other branches of industry 
agriculture is the noblest and best occupation of man and in a country like the united states where land is plenty and labor scarce it will always be pushed to the extent which a profitable market demands yet if none worked by those who labored in the field society could not exist long we should perish with cold and hunger it is by an association of the arts that we live and our comfort materially depends on their respective perfections only about one-fifth of a population are fitted for agricultural labors in general the other four-fifths if idle would consume the whole amount of value produced and send the laborers supperless to bed it is the capacity of production in the most numerous body that must be brought into action if families and nations would prosper and be happy if they purchase anything which their lost time might be applied to the fabrication of they might as well throw its cost into the sea in the course of our essays which we expect to commence in two or three weeks we shall endeavor to point out some of the chief things that require the protection of government just as those of a well-regulated family are managed and show that the well-being of a nation depends upon a fair exchange of labor for labor substantials for substantials and even luxuries for luxuries the man who exchanges wheat for earrings unless those rings are manufactured in his country wastes to the country the whole amount of the intrinsic value of the wheat over that of the earrings which latter is only that of the metal composing them a nation cannot be independent if it looks to another for necessaries it cannot be rich if it exchanges necessaries for luxuries and luxuries especially should not be received at all unless things of the same class are remitted in payment for them the effect of these on population and manners will also be considered and illustrated by many statistical facts as leisure is allowed to arrange them End of section eleven